Hello! To those of you who have never seen one of my videos before, I'm Amazon Kane. I'm a writer, I'm obsessed with Angela Anaconda, I do rewatch videos such as this one, and my ultimate goal is to run an official reboot of the series, and you can even see what that would look like on my channel as I organized a small team to revamp the theme song. This is an episode I actually remember and forgot to talk about. Who's sorry now? Don't remember too much about it. I remember some vague moments here and there, but this is an episode that aired a lot. And before I continue with that, I wanted to say thank you guys so much for all the support from last week. It really means a lot. That being said, here is Who's Sorry Now? But I'm going to play the theme song first. My name is Angela. Hey, hello. Welcome, Welcome to my very own show. I'll, I'll introduce, introduce my friends to you. Ah, uh, now it's Ninny Poo. Shibby dooby doo wah wah. My name is Angela. I appreciated the vengeance as a kid. Today Even in the theme song. Any day, our class is being visited by his greatest majesty, Prince Abdul Khalif Jabala Saladin. The richest boy in the whole world. Oh. Welcome, Prince Abdul, to our humble halls of learning! <laughs> well, um... Won't give you any attention, Mrs. Brinks. Also... for this. together. Though I know Angela's excited for this. Hey Johnny, trade you for my salami and pickle sandwich I brought for lunch. Huh? Oh. I don't see no pickles. <laughs> hey, this salami's baloney. And your guys for the day are Johnny got ripped off. Be... But I think he dodged a bullet. Angela Very 
stereotypical. I do not eat the food of dogs either. Ain't saying she's a gold digger. It's baloney, Angela. <laughs> Angela really treats Johnny like shit in this show, doesn't she? <laughs> That's something I'd like to change. I don't know. Where are balonies from? It's a mystery meat. One of a genre of ground up animal parts molded together to resemble foodstuffs. The hot dog is a good example. Baloney is a meat? <laughs> I thought it was a flavor. More duck than garage <laughs> girls? Johnny is criminally underused. So superior. So French. So what? Saladini, Salamon! So now I'm the Nini Poo's hair of gold and baloney. I am the leader, but his royal lowness does not want to follow. Angela, you tricked me. Johnny. We're busy with far more important things than your silly salami sandwich. Oh yeah? Like what? Like me. Baloney baloney salami. I warn you, I am a master of the seven arts of self-defense. <laughs> well, I'm the undefeated tap water spring junior wrestling champion. You wrestled a stray kitten from an alley. And you wrestle squirrels on a regular basis. Johnny. Oh, good riddance to bad rubbish. Uh -oh. Rubbish? How dare you insult my pal? Only I can do that. <laughs> Enough of these fish to cups. Angela and the cops. That could have been an I international incident, Angela. Straight into juvenile delinquency. As for you, your majesty, I am quite surprised. Now you both can spend the rest of the recess on the bench thinking about your barbaric behavior. Mm. Oh, that bowing and lifting must do one. For your pets. <sighs> wow, Mrs. Brink, she is shameless. Time. Your strength, your anger. You are the superior one, huh? Oh, oh her anger makes her superior. Must be mine. <laughs> I will give you anything you want. Marry me, and you will be the richest girl in the world. <gasps> the richest girl in the world? Angela, no, it's not worth being a child bride. So now I am the richest girl in the world, and everyone wants to be nice to me. Even my formerly unnice brothers. Please, please, oh, Princess Angel, we bang Who have not been introduced so far this episode. Together, my dimwit brothers will tell me. Please let us serve you. Also, aviators. This, I will tell them. What is this? A princess cannot degrade herself by watching TV. Hmm. Salamander, Sanfarilla, Sopapilla. Also, whoa, Monty Python ass. Okay, so maybe I won't be watching as much TV but I'll still get to wear the finest clothes made from spools of golden thread. <laughs> soda pop, soda Exploiting in that. A princess must be properly dressed like this. I definitely remember that. Okay, so not... maybe these clothes aren't what I'm used to. But in my country, it will be law that kids drive cars. But the <laughs> girls walk. Hey, Angela, want a bumper car ride? No, a princess must be carrying Sake soda, salmonella, super salad. I love how they can reuse these designs in their revenge fantasies. Great. I won't get to drive around in bumper cars either. And but again, it's a very self-indulgent fantasy, but at the same time... Who I will make minister of all things icy and creamy. Tell me I can't even eat an ice cream cone from my best friend Gina Lash. Of course not. A princess must Gordy's her best friend. Food fit for a princess. Like caviar. Cerebellum, Sarasota, suck it to him. Caviar? But that's fish eggs. So? And you must eat it five times a day. Ugh. <laughs> Does she always act crazy? 
you in this fashion? Yep. Yep. And she'll trick you into eating bologna too. <laughs> Perhaps I was a bit hasty with my proposal of marriage. Wouldn't want to pollute the genie pool, so to speak. What? She's You're not like good enough for you? Saladan, Saladini, Sayonara. Aw, Johnny, that's nice. Maybe this is why people ship them. Forget about it, Johnny. I wouldn't marry him if he were prince of the whole solar system. Yep, that goes double for me. <laughs> Will I ever see you again, your highness? Medusa hair. Oh, the spools of golden threads are now knots of yellow threads. Yellow dreads. I'm not a... I'm not sure I like the beauty standards in this. <laughs> but granted, beauty standards are very, very fickle. Well, like his lowly hiney said, good riddance to bad rubbish. You know, Angela Anaconda, you still owe me a salami and pickle sandwich. What do I look like, Johnny Abadi, the richest girl in the world? Well, poor Johnny. <sighs> And the one person who gets to be happy with what he has is Johnny Body. Maybe on some level he likes being pushed around by Angela. I don't know. I've met people who do, who do like that. I wouldn't call this one a particularly good episode. And yeah, there's definitely things about it that have not aged well. I'm obviously not properly equipped to talk about the the data design. I don't even know what country that character is supposed to be from. Is he supposed to be a Saudi prince? I know very, very little about Middle Eastern people, but again, a lot of the characters are stereotypes, and I've noticed that in this show, they do a lot of jerk characters, but they, something about it doesn't come across as funny versus a character who's more established. Someone like Mrs. Brinks is very funny because she's an attention whore. Nanette's very funny because Ruby, Ruby Smith Mervitz, her voice actress, is very charming and very funny. And you can hear some of the passion coming from her voice. Angela definitely has her flaws. She's not particularly sympathetic here. And she does realize it's not worth it. She just realized it's not worth it being a gold digger, so that's a good moral. <laughs> not that I'm really watching these for morals, but still. Angel does have a very selfish side. And <laughs> again, the Johnny abuse started early. It is really nice that he does end up defending her through it all, and she does have a moral center, does realize, oh, hey, maybe this isn't so great after all. You know, be careful what you wish for. But something about the pacing of this episode, something about, I can't quite put my finger on it, something about the pacing, something about the characters right here, it does feel like it's still finding its footing. It does feel like I'm not really, I don't feel like she really went on this journey. I don't feel like she really bought into this it's not even always so clear if she's into him because he's really rude or because he has a ton of money I think they're going with I think the implication especially because they're the fantasy sequences uh, she realizes hey uh, being a princess being a, being rich has its limitations I think they're going with she's into the she wants to suck up to the rich guy too which is kind of interesting coming from the protagonist which is something she criticizes Nanette for yeah those two really are similar again I like the ideas behind it but I think his character could have been funnier I think it could have been clearer oh she likes she finds the idea of being super rich appealing but you're not really having a moment where Especially early on, because she's already excited to, to be the one to give him the tour, even though... So, she's into this idea right off the bat, and then she's impressed by fancy food. So, I <laughs> guess everyone can be bribed with food in this universe. Food and attention! That seems to be the major currency in Tapwater Springs. So, more emphasis on the characters, stronger pacing, clearer ideas... 
could make this work, and, and a funnier antagonist. Because again, the, the one-off jerk characters they brought in, uh, uh, this guy and uh, Cece, who is the French exchange student, both seem to be foreign. Hmm. Don't think it was intentionally xenophobic, I think it was... But it does come off a little that way, but they're not... Again, they're very one-dimensional, very stock jerks, and there's not a ton of fun with them. And jerk characters can be and often are a ton of fun. So stronger pacing, stronger character moments, clearer ideas, a funnier antagonist could actually make this story work. Again, there are great ideas here. Be careful what you w wish for. And the, the temptation of having a lot of money because, yeah, that is a temptation for a lot of people. And... You know, if I were a rich man, Fiddler on the Roof, classic song. I And I like the idea that, hey, be happy with what you have, be careful with what you wish for. This is not an episode where Angela's particularly sympathetic, again, because she screws over Johnny. And at least he has the balls to remind her that she owes him a goddamn sandwich. I thought that was funny. Again, I actually wish Johnny was used a little bit more. I feel the same for a lot of the other side characters because his voice actor has really good comic timing and he is funny. I like there's some episodes where he gets on Mrs. Brinks' nerves. That's hilarious. He has some stronger moments here. That's great. So there's a lot of potential. I wouldn't call this one of the better episodes by any means. Another example of Actually, I found this one somewhat unpleasant. But again, good ideas that could be executed stronger. And one I definitely remember watching a lot. This one definitely aired a lot too, so those are my thoughts on this one. See you later when you see me.